Welcome to Experts Unleashed, a podcast that aims to uncover how professionals and entrepreneurs transform their experience into income while making a positive impact in the world. I'm your host, Joel Irway, and over the past four years, I've helped entrepreneurs develop and launch their expert-based businesses to grow past six and seven figures per year. Now, a professional expert serves their community through paid training, education, or service, and this podcast will show you how to design and execute your plan to become a six or seven figure expert without a big team. So let's get started. Hey, what's going on experts? Joel Irway here and welcome to another episode of Experts Unleashed. In today's interview, you are going to hear from Dr. Karen Litzy, who is a physical therapist, gone through an interesting journey. And when we chatted, we went through quite the unique conversation. I met Dr. Karen in uh, New York City and I knew that her story was going to be very relevant to you. Now, this is somebody who uh, who had graduated and had a physical therapy job uh, after she received her uh, her doctorate, and she left without any sort of security blanket. She left to go to a brand new city and uh, and no guarantees and and no job to go to. So we talked about that journey, what she did when she got to this new city, and then ultimately how she even left those jobs when she found them and to do something completely different than what she went to school for. This is a fascinating interview. Now she's just blowing up. She has uh, she has started her own business. She sees a bunch of different opportunities that presented themselves and we dove deep in every single one of them. And she is traveling the world, being asked to speak. And it all started from uh, one thing that was completely different than what she had went to school for. So you're gonna love this episode. Uh, it's going to be very relevant to you and I know that you are going to enjoy it. So without further ado, let's jump into today's interview and enjoy. Dr. Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joel, so much for having me. I'm honored, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna have a blast today. So as I always like to start off my interviews, give my audience, my listeners, a quick heads up as to what it is that you do, what are you doing right now, so we can have some uh, framework before we rewind and tell the story. Absolutely. So right now, I am a physical therapist. I have a concierge practice in New York City, where I see patients in their homes or their offices. And I also am the host of a podcast called Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart. And it kind of blends the worlds of health and physical therapy with entrepreneurship. So I do that on the side, and then I'm just gearing up to launch some online programs just to help more physical therapists kind of step into that entrepreneurial world. Sounds amazing. Okay, so you said something that I want to make sure that all of my listeners understand. You say concierge physical therapy practice. What does concierge mean? That sounds very super exclusive. It does sound super exclusive. It's not that exclusive, though, I promise. You know, I use the term concierge practice as a a term because I go to the patient's home. So I come to them, I make their life easier. I also help to coordinate a lot of their medical care. So if they need referrals to other doctors or to Pilates or yoga or personal trainers, then they'll usually come to me and I'll be able to coordinate that care for them. So I use the term concierge more along the lines of like a concierge at the St. Regis or something like that. So it's a person that's there for you who can help make your life a little bit easier. Sounds fascinating. So I want one already. I don't even need physical therapy, but I want one. (laughs) So, okay. So you're super successful. You've got a lot of different products on your plate right now. So I want to hit the rewind button and I want to go back. Um, You said you've been doing this for roughly 10 years. Part of it was part-time and full-time, but you've been, you've been in the professional world for about 10 years. Oh, much longer. Much longer. Okay. Yes. Yes, much longer. So I w- I've been in the professional world almost twenty years. Okay. But the entrepreneurial side took a little bit longer to get there. Okay. All right. So let's let's start when you're just about to graduate from college and 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 your onset of what you thought your life was going to be like. But what was the original plan? Well, when I graduated from college, the plan was, and and this was pretty consistent at the time for physical therapists, is you graduate from college and you got a job at a hospital or an outpatient facility, uh, a rehab facility, or maybe a skilled nursing facility. 
And I really had no mindset, not even close to saying to myself, you know, maybe I can start my own business, not even on the radar at all. So I graduated. I worked in a hospital for about a year and a half in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And then a girl that I went to high school with was asking around because she needed a roommate to live in her apartment, to share an apartment with her in New York City. And so I just moved and I had no job. At least I transferred my physical therapy license over. So from Pennsylvania to New York, but I had no job. I didn't really have any friends except for the girl that I was living with and just decided to move. Why? So, I mean, you just didn't want to stay in, you're tired of Scranton and you thought, I guess I just thought, this could be a fun opportunity. I mean, I was 25 or 26 years old and thought, this is perfect. Yeah, I'll move to New York. Why not? I I was like, I'm not really doing anything at home except working. And so I just moved. And that was, that was it. Okay, cool. So what happened? You got to New York and I got to New York and could not find a physical therapy job that I liked. I went on interview after interview and nothing was really connecting. And So I decided to take a job as a personal trainer at a very high-end gym here in New York City. And I credit having that job in that gym as a personal trainer was sparking a little bit of that entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. Because what I've noticed when I was there is a lot of the personal trainers that work for the gym were also seeing patients or clients, I should say, on the side, going Mm -hmm. to their apartment buildings and, and training them there. And I thought, well, if they can do that as a trainer, then I, surely I can do that as a physical therapist. And that is what kind of initially sparked that, that idea of seeing patients in their home and, and kind of moving beyond a traditional setting. So I worked there for a couple of years and then went into a, a physical therapy outpatient facility, uh, did that for a couple of years and was still seeing patients on the side. So I had a full-time job and was seeing patients on the side. And then started seeing more patients and more patients on the side. And so I decided to leave a full-time job and go part-time. And well, then before, that before we get there, class. sorry, I didn't mean to jump in, but yeah. I want to, I want to go back a little bit. Um, when you said you, you were working, you couldn't find a physical therapy job that you enjoyed, right? Like, what was wrong with the ones in New York versus the ones in, uh, in Scranton? Well, you know, I think that I was really looking to move to an outpatient practice. So I didn't want, I was working in a hospital in Scranton and I didn't want to work in the hospital setting anymore. I wanted to be in an outpatient setting and seeing more orthopedic diagnoses, post-surgical, low back, things like that. And I just could not find the right fit for me. And I needed a job because Mm -hmm. I just moved to New York. Right, right. I still needed a job. And that's when I decided to look into working at this gym. And I thought, oh, this will just be like a bridge. You know, I'll work at this gym as a trainer, and then I'm sure I'll find a PT job that I like within a couple of months. Well, like a were year you doing later. both? Were you working at the gym and uh, physical therapy, or did you leave all your physical therapy gigs? So I was doing a little bit of both. So I was okay. kind of seeing patients on the side, like maybe just one or two, but mainly working at the gym. And I say one of the best decisions I ever made when I moved to New York was working at that gym because everyone there was my age. So I had like instant friends and the people that I worked with at that gym refer patients to me to this day. So this is fascinating to me for a couple of reasons, because number one, you know, you've got your, your license, you're a doctor and you left everything in Scranton with no security blanket in New York. Then you get a couple of jobs in New York. You really don't like it. And then, I mean, I'm not meaning to discredit personal trainers, but I mean, like you go work at a gym and you know, you're not really, I mean, you were, you still have plans to go pursue something with your, with your degree. But I mean, like, how did that feel? I mean, was it just like, okay, I'll figure it out. Or were you a little nervous or what was that like? Uh, Yeah, I I was a little nervous just from like a monetary standpoint, but when I decided to work at this gym, I just knew that at that point in time, it was the right decision for me to make because I was still working one-on-one with people. And to be honest, it actually helped to sharpen my exercise prescription. Uh, Being around very seasoned, very educated trainers was a really good education for me. 
Mm-hmm. So I always look at that as not so much a step backwards, maybe a parallel step, because it did help me to get a lot better at exercise prescription, to get more training in different exercises and things like that, that maybe I didn't have working in a hospital or even in college. Mm-hmm. So I looked at it as a year of great education, meeting incredible people, the people that I worked with, my clients, as well as my fellow trainers and nutritionists and Pilates instructors and yoga instructors, you know, you name it. And for me, it really created a great sense of community in this big, gigantic city. Yeah, I love it. I love it because um, I have a very similar story, meaning I jumped into a different field that was, you know, not really what I had gone to school for, which was sales, right? I was educated as an engineer and I'm like, uh, you know, I didn't really like what I was doing. I'm like, well, you know, I'll try sales engineering. It was just a new opportunity that popped up. But I'll tell you what, it opened up so many doors going into a concentric field. So it was still related, but not the not the clear path that I thought I had when I left when I left college. So I, I love those those stories. Okay, so your personal trainer for a year. So then then what happens? Uh, then I got a job at an outpatient orthopedic clinic that was very well regarded. And I worked there for a couple of years, left there, went to another outpatient clinic and stayed there for maybe four years or so, maybe a little bit longer. And then that's when my sort of side business started to pick up and I was able to, not able to, I kind of had, I had to quit my full-time job because I was probably working like 70 hours a week of direct patient care, which is an astronomical amount. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to save my sanity and myself that I would leave the full-time position. And friends of mine had just opened up a new clinic and they were looking for someone to work part-time and they asked and I said, yes. And it was great. When was the first time that you landed a um, a side client, or was it at the first outpatient clinic or the second? I'd say consistently, probably the second. The second one, okay. Yeah. So, how did that come to play? Like, how did you land that first? It was a referral from a trainer from the gym that I worked at. Perfect. Yeah. So it all comes back around. Okay. So when when you land that client, right? What was that like? I mean, did you know that, were there other people doing that kind of on the side in the world of physical therapy or you were just kind of like, I'll kind of help you. We'll see what happens. Like, yeah, it was more of like, I'll help you. We'll see what happens. I didn't really know anyone who was doing that consistently. Uh, so yeah, it was more of a, yeah, I can see you. And then it became more and more and more people. And then I decided like, I need to buckle down and create a company and do this the right way. Is it common for somebody to just go see, you know, for a patient to go see somebody on the side versus going to a clinic? Like, why did they decide not to go to the clinic and and just work with you? Well, it's New York City and everybody is busy and having someone come to you is super convenient. Perfect. All right. So this was your first concierge client. You probably didn't call it that at the time, but yeah, no. Cool. All right. So, all right. You have your two outpatient clinic jobs and you start seeing these, um, seeing these clients on the side. So tell me when it started to, you started to percolate the idea of like, okay, hey, I have got another client, another, like when, when that book of business started to kind of grow on the side, like what was going through your mind then? I think I was starting to think this might be a very manageable business. This might be something that I can do. And it really took major shape when I found myself completely exhausted working seven days a week because I was working 40 hours a week in a clinic and in a physical therapy clinic, like tack on five extra hours a week for paperwork and things like that. Cause you're coming in an hour early, you're staying an hour later, most nights. And so then I was seeing patients before work, after work weekends. So it was the sheer exhaustion of working too many hours a week that prompted me to say, you know, I think I've had enough. And like I said, my friends opened up this business. So right time, right place, maybe a little bit of coincidence there as well. And when I went into work with them, I was very honest in saying, listen, I am building this, my own practice up on the side. And they were great. I mean, I was in a situation where I was extremely lucky or maybe not extremely lucky. What is it like? Luck is like you work hard and things happen. You create your own luck. The harder you work, the more luck that 
Exactly. So I worked very, very hard. So I guess I created more luck. And when I started working part time, the practice just kept growing. And as a matter of fact, the guys that I worked for, they were two of my friends. If someone called the clinic asking if they do house calls, they would refer them to me. <laughs> so it was just a win win. And I then got even busier and went from working 20 hours a week to 16 or to 12 to eight. And then I sort of clung on with that to that eight for a long time. And I don't think it was, was it certainly wasn't for the money, it was for the camaraderie. And I remember when I, quit that job and decided to go full time. Like I had a full on panic attack. Mm -hmm. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, I mean, it was, it was bad. Yeah. Full on panic attack when I decided just to let go of those eight hours and do this whole thing on my own. So what, um, I love that by the way, because you know, whenever I, I left, I have a similar experience. When I left my full time job, I had nothing. I, I didn't, I didn't have any patients or clients or anything on the side. And I was just like, okay, let's leave this cushy six figure year sales job and uh, do nothing. I mean, not do nothing, but like I have right. nothing to fall back on. So I love it. Uh, risk is, is a, a core trait that almost all entrepreneurs take. So even though you're risk averse, you said that I, earlier, yeah. <laughs> you still had to take that leap of faith. That's true. Okay. So I mean, you're super scared now because you really don't have any business background. I mean, aside from these clients that have been just coming in through re referrals, I mean, um, tell me what's happening. Like, okay, you've got success and it's, and it's growing and, you know, wh now, where are we now? Now, what do you do, right? Mm -hmm. So I sort of dove into a lot of reading, reading different business books. I took Marie Forleo's B-School uh, a lot of my clients are CEOs of large companies. And so they became my greatest resource. I was able to ask them questions and they were not only CEOs of companies, but CEOs of companies they themselves started. So they were a huge source of information and guidance and mentorship for me. How did they uh, become your clients? Like, how did you attract those types of clientele? I think it was through word of mouth, through physician referrals. And again, going back to the gym, just referring, because the gym that I worked at was a very, very elite gym. Mm -hmm. And so those are the people who were going to that gym. And, you know, it, it's funny, and I'm sure it's within any city, but you kind of meet someone and then they refer you to their friends and, and you're all kind of in the same circle. I love it. So I think that's, I think it's, it's super critical. So you started leveraging actually your clients, you're asking your clients for advice or, you know, yeah, for all help the time. You, yeah. So can you give me an, an example? Like, do you remember, um, one specific client or one specific piece of advice that your client gave you as you're starting to build this, you know, on, on your own that really made a big impact? Like maybe it caused a flood of referrals or maybe it was like, okay, I'm going to follow that. But like any, any examples? Yeah. I remember I was seeing a patient and within the building that she lives in, which is one of these big sort of pre-war buildings on Central Park West, very fancy. They had a, like a flyer that went around to everyone in the building. And she really pushed me for a couple of months for her to say, why don't I write a blurb about you in the flyer? And at first I was like, oh, I don't know, it's a little weird and it might be a little strange. And she pushed and she pushed. And so I said, fine. So I wrote something up, I gave to her, she put it in her flyer. And I ended up getting two patients within the week the flyer went out. And those two patients went on to refer, I couldn't even tell you how many, I would say a minimum of 20 wow. patients to me. And so that was one. So from that encounter, I thought to myself, okay, I need to be more confident. I need to be confident in myself to put myself out there and to quote unquote advertise because I always looked at it as being like, oh, it's kind of icky and I don't want to be like a used car salesman. And But instead, if I just lead with value and lead with what I can do to help people, it's not car salesy. It's just being truthful about my skills and what I can do. And that was such a huge lesson to learn. And I've taken that lesson and have used that repeatedly with meeting with physicians and just even meeting with people out and about in the city with my friends and even with other clients, I'm not afraid now to say, Hey, if you know someone that might need my services, just, just let me know. I can give you some cards. And so that was a big lesson to learn. 
You know, what's fascinating is I just had an interview. Um, I, I, one of the earlier episodes was with um, Tara Bradford, and she talked about how like people want to help you. Like if you are not necessarily vulnerable, but like if you're just open to it and you let people know that, well, you know, whatever you do, because she was talking about how she was breaking into already established social circles, which then allowed her to become a publicity expert. It's a very, very good episode. Make sure that you tune into it. But the the core idea was like, people want to help you, like let them help you. And so yes. fat, even your current clients, they are, they are probably your biggest advocates. And if you're not leveraging them, then, you know, there's definitely lost opportunity there. Yeah, I could not agree more. And, and that is kind of my biggest lesson learned is to allow people to help me. Cause I am like a bit type a and a bit, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. And in the end, like you can't do it all. And I was, had an interview a couple of years ago and the woman that I was interviewing said something that really stuck with me. And if you, if you try and do it all, it'll keep you small. Mm -hmm. It was Stephanie Nikolich. So she's a, a coach. She said, if you try to do it all, it'll keep you small. And I just keep hearing that in my head whenever I say to myself, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. I can do this on my own. And you can't, Mm -hmm. you can't. And so being able to accept that help from other people and just to say, thank you. Oftentimes people say, oh, should I send a gift? Should I do this? And you could just write a thank you note Mm -hmm. because people want to help you. They're not looking necessarily for this, what is it? Quid pro quo back and forth They're They, people want to help. And mm-hmm. I see myself, I want to help other people. Yeah. You know, I'm super quick to help other people. And yet I have a, such a hard time accepting it in return. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, we often forget, like when we're on the opposite side, we often forget how good it feels to help somebody mm-hmm. else. And, you know, people, they just want to be part of the journey. Like they want to be yes. part of your success. Like they like you so much, like they want to help you help you grow. So yeah. great little sidebar there. I thought it was very, very good. Okay, so you're growing now and okay, referrals are coming in. You're doing very little advertising, probably aside from the flyer, but now you're you're promoting yourself. So let's let's kind of fast forward a little bit. So now you're you know you're super established. You made another pivot, which is kind of what you're focusing on now, which is helping other physical therapists grow their business. So where did that all come from? Well, you know, I'm part of a lot of groups on social media. And I would see questions kind of cycle through these groups and from whether they be students, new graduates, even people who have been graduated as long as me. And I would see these questions and think, well, that happened to me or I did that. I think I can help. I can do this. And so I just decided to put myself out there, like we just said, to help other people. Not to mention, I would get probably a couple of emails a week from people asking how, how did you do A, B or C? And so what I did was I kind of took all those questions and wrote out some more formal answers and I would be sending and helping all these people. And and then I thought it would be so much easier instead of just helping one person, maybe I can help a whole bunch at one time. And so that's where this, uh, this kind of idea to create a program to help therapists create their own businesses came about, but I, I'm, I wanted to make sure that I did it the right way. And so mm-hmm. I've been able to bring on a lot of partners and cause I don't know everything and I'm incredibly, incredibly happy to admit, I don't know everything. And so what I don't know, I kind of help bring people on. And I think it's been for me, a great learning experience for myself and hopefully it'll help people when it launches in about a month. Yes. Why do you think you got into the world of physical therapy? Like what got you excited about physical therapy? Like when you, when you decided to pursue that? Yeah, well, I was always athletic. I grew up as a gymnast. I played softball. I played softball even in college. And when I was in high school, the, I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania. Probably near it, Scranton, right? It's near Scranton. <laughs> and uh, it is about 15 minutes from Scranton. And the physical therapist in my town wanted to kind of do all these strength and flexibility tests on me because I had been a gymnast for so long just to see, does that flexibility last all this other stuff? And I thought, so I would go and kind of hang around his clinic and watch what he was doing. And I liked it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. 
And when I was getting ready to graduate, I knew I wanted to do something in the medical field. I didn't know if I wanted to be a doctor. So I thought, well, I can go to school for five years, get my master's degree in physical therapy. And then if I want to go into medical school, I can. And if I go to medical school and I don't like it, I have a degree to fall back on. And once I was in physical therapy school and went out on my clinical rotations, I realized how much more time you get to spend with the patients versus the physicians and how much I really enjoyed it. And so I graduated with my master's. And then a couple of years ago, 2014 uh, or 2012, I went back to school for two more years and I got my doctorate. Awesome. Yeah. There's always a common thread with people who are leaders and influencers teaching other people or uh, you know, like yourself teaching other people how to grow their own business through the struggles that you know happen because nobody teaches it, right? It's like, oh, you can be a physical therapist, but we're not going to show you how to build a business, which is probably more important than, <laughs> not yeah. more important, yeah. but like you can't do one without the other. I mean, if you don't have sure. patients, you can't, you can't help them. Uh, so it's fascinating because uh, we're always looking for more. Like we're always in this deep education cycle and, and you, you know, we, we never stop learning and never. Uh, very, very apparent that you have a passion for it and uh, you enjoy teaching other people. So you went off and you launched your own business, right? Mm -hmm. At what point when you're doing that and you made the pivot to then teach other physical therapy owners how to build their business, that's a, pr that's a huge pivot, right? You're successful in your business, but like, and I know you told the story of like when you started to see the opportunity, but like, was there anything else that, that came to mind like when you decided to pursue this? Like, did you see other people being successful as experts, as influencers? Like, what did you see in that space? Not necessarily related to your opportunity. I definitely saw other people in the physical therapy world teaching people how to be successful entrepreneurs. And they're doing a really great job. But there are a lot of physical therapists in the world. And not everybody is everyone else's cup of tea, you know? It's why they make cars in different colors so that mm -hmm. people have a choice. And what I did notice is that none of the really big names or big influencers in this space were women when 65% of physical therapists are women. And so why not have, you know, someone that looks like you be able to teach things to you and be able to help you and be able to help you grow and prosper. And so that was a, a big motivator for me was to say, well, I mean, these guys are definitely doing a great job, but maybe there are some women out there who aren't resonating with those people and would like, would maybe resonate more with, with uh, a woman teaching them. And so that was something that I saw as sort of a gap in the market. And, and it became clearer for me two years ago, I started a yearly event called the Women in PT Summit here in New York City, and it's meant to help kind of inspire, empower, and amplify the voices of women in the profession, as well as the men who support them. We are equal opportunity. We want men and women both to come. And what I found was that after these events, women were saying, you know, I quit my job and started my own business. I just needed to know that I had a tribe of people that will be there to support me. And I just got another message two days ago from a woman who attended just last year. And she said, you know, I, had, I thought about opening my own business, but didn't think I could. And then I went to the Women in PT Summit and then she met with me one on one and got some other mentors. She quit her job and she's happy and she started her own business. And so that's when I hear these stories, like you said, helping people makes you feel so good. So it made me feel really, really good and really happy for all of the women who have come through this conference so far. And I just thought there's, there's a gap here. There's a gap and there is it, it. And someone needs to step into that. And if that means I have the opportunity to do that, then I want to take that opportunity to help all these other people who, who maybe want to step into the entrepreneurial space, but haven't quite found the right pathway to do it yet. And so that was what really motivated me. So there's, there's always, I right, go, go back to risk, right? There's always risk involved when you're starting a new venture. I mean, you, when you made your first pivot to go out on your own, you had a little bit of a book of business to kind of keep your head afloat before you grew right. it, right? But going out and teaching other physical therapists, I know that you saw the questions coming through from, you know, other people who wanted help, but like, when did you have your first launch or when did you have your first kind of like validation that like, okay, Hey, there's something 
here? Sure. Well, I would say, I think it was maybe three years ago, I launched an online program and it was called Strictly Business. And I had had a couple of different modules with some, you know, your, your typical online program, some webinars, some interviews, worksheets, and people signed up for it. When I put things out there, I'm like, oh, who's going to want to learn from me? And do they, is it really interesting for them? And are they going to like it? Will they find it helpful? And I just put this out there. People bought it. People liked it. Someone was like, it was like getting a mini MBA. And now all of those people that took that course now have their own business and thriving business. And I remember one girl said, look, I did everything you said. I started this. I have the website. And now she's just growing and growing. Mm -hmm. And that strictly business was really for people just starting out. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this, how that, how that was successful and people found it valuable, flash forward three years, it took me a little bit of time to kind of get my stuff together. And I think I've moved into a new phase of business myself. And now I feel like I can put on a program that's much more robust and that I think will really set people up for success. But that first taste of it was a couple of years ago with an online program that I just put together and launched. And yeah, people bought it, which always surprises me. I don't know why I should be surprised, but like you've launched, aren't you like sometimes surprised when you're like, people, people bought that or people <laughs> listen to this? People get, and I don't know why it still surprises me, but it does. And I think that was the first sort of taste of my being able to help other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. So you made that sound, uh, not sound super simple. I mean, cause there's always, there's always struggles going through it. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, cause I, when you launch something, you have to have an audience, right? Yeah. So where did this audience come from? I mean, you know, how did you have the relative people who would, who you thought might be interested in this first, in this first venture? Yeah, my audience comes from my podcast. So I've been doing my podcast probably since 2011, 2012, maybe. I forget. Um, I did take a couple of years off when I went back to school to get my doctorate because I was still working full time and getting a doctorate and having a podcast. Something's got to give. And so in 2016, I put the podcast up, revamped it, and it's constantly being revamped each year. But the audience comes from the podcast and comes from pretty uh, good-sized social media presence. And I think that's where the, certainly where the audience comes from. So people know me, mm -hmm. they know me, they trust me. I can't say if they all like me, but they definitely know me, uh, <laughs> which is good. And so that's where the audience came from. And I take that audience very seriously. I love my audience. And if I'm going to put something out there that I know that it's going to be something that's relevant to them. So I take it very seriously. I didn't realize you'd started podcasting back in 2011. That was the start, right? You like, why did you start podcasting? Was that just kind of, Hey, I'm well, just going to test it out and see what happens. No, I just kind of fell into it. Same thing of like moving to New York, working in a gym, everything just kind of falls into place. So I just kind of fell into it. A friend of mine was the host of a live radio show on an internet radio station. And he asked me, and this friend of mine was a trainer at the gym that I started working at. So see how it's all connected? Yep. So I came on to his show. The producer of that radio station said, you have a nice voice. You seem smart. Would you like your own show? <laughs> and so I was like, oh, let me think about it. And I thought about it. And I was like, fine, sure. So I think I was like one of the very first physical therapy related radio shows. And it was just you? Was it a solo show or did you have guests come on? I had guests come on. Okay. So it was an interview type show. Same mm -hmm. thing as this. Mm -hmm. And, but it was at live every Monday at one o'clock. And like, this was podcasts weren't even a thing then. Yep. You know, they were not what they are now. This is like the pre-serial days, right? And pre-Mark Marin, pre-all that. So podcasts obviously exploded in the last couple of years. So I was doing this live show. And then after I did an online summit for physical therapists, and this, had not, this wasn't business specific, 
but I just had all of these people that I had interviewed on my podcast. I said, why don't we do an online summit? So I did an online summit, which had never been done in the PT world before. And I don't know, I had maybe like 3000 people sign up. And once I did that online summit, I was like, wait a second, I can do this. I can interview people from my home. Why am I paying a hundred dollars every week to rent the space of a studio? So I then stopped renting the space through the internet radio station, started doing the podcast from my home, very low tech. Mm -hmm. Uh, Libsyn was not a thing. I had to set up my own host. I hosted my own podcast on my own website (sighs) and had to like manually put it into iTunes. Like that's how old this was. Mm -hmm. And then as podcasting became more sophisticated, I was able to grow and change with those, um, with better technology. But yeah, it started like a while ago. So you got your podcast and you're like, okay, awesome. I'm just going to continue doing this, right? Mm-hmm. Why did you continue doing it? Did you get any sort of feedback? It was like, what was sparking you to, to keep it going? Well, I'm like kind of a bit of a nerd and a dork and I love to learn. And I was able to get all these huge influencers from the physical therapy world to come on my podcast. And so I thought, what a great opportunity for me that I get to learn straight from the experts, straight from the researchers. And that's why I do it. That's why I still do it. Because I love learning and I love to highlight people who are doing amazing things and changing the world and and helping people recover from pain or injury. And that's the main reason I did do it. I continue to do it to this day. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any thoughts of I can monetize this podcast. I can make money off. This was like the furthest thing from my mind was thinking that I could actually make money off of it. I just really enjoy doing it. And so if I enjoy doing something, I'm going to continue to do it. Perfect. So it was a great way for you to connect, build more influence and connect with other, yeah, yeah, whole nine yards. So, all right. So 2011, you, you get it, but like, I'm trying to get at like something had to have happened. Like when did you pause the podcast? Let's let's kind of. So I paused between I think like 2012 and 2014. I was maybe doing like one a month, two a month, like sort of a one-off. So I really took a pause there. No, maybe it was between 2014 and two. At any rate, around that time, and that's just when I was going back to school to get that doctorate degree. Got it. So once I got the doctorate degree, I think it took me a couple of months, and then. I really revamped it and started back up in earnest in 2016. Perfect. And I was still kind of hosting it on my own. I think like mid 2016, I signed up with Libsyn and obviously that makes life a million times easier wherever you're, wherever your hosting site is. Mm-hmm. And I started to reach out to bigger guests. I started to reach out to people who weren't in physical therapy. So one of my big guests in 2016 was Gloria Steinem. Uh, she had just had a book come out. So I reached out and they said, yes, and great, uh, super. And so it's kind of evolved. It went from being kind of a health and wellness podcast because I thought, Who's, who wants to listen to physical therapy all the time? Well, as it turns out, a lot of people. Uh, so then I went sort of strictly physical therapy. And now my goal is to sort of broaden the guests and the topics. I still bring it back to physical therapy and try and connect it to what I do. But the goal is that you may listen to an episode with a Gloria Steinem, and as you're looking through, it might be an episode on knee pain, and you may think, I have knee pain, maybe I should listen to this, or one on back pain, and say, oh, I have back pain, maybe this will be helpful for me. So the goal is to kind of broaden the audience, while at the same time, advocating for the profession of physical therapy, letting people understand what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. Cause there's a lot of myths out there. So that's my goal with the yeah. podcast. I love it. I mean, and it's, and it's just leveraging all the assets that you have to get the momentum moving forward. Um, yeah. You said your primary audience is on is, is your podcast. I mean, I know you were able to launch multiple successful programs now because of, because of, you know, because of the podcast. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's been fun. Like if anyone ever said to me, even in 2016, when I kind of revamped it, that this is where I would be now, I would say you're, you're crazy, <laughs> you know? So now I've been able, yes, to monetize the podcast, which is nice. Cause you get paid for doing something that I'm going to be doing anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and that has allowed me to grow 
And because of that, you know, you have a little more recognition and now I'm able to go all over the world speaking, which has been a big surprise to me. And so, it's been a lot of fun. Okay. So you're going all over the world speaking. What's, what's this? So what happened? I mean, is this, you're getting invited to speak? Yeah. So getting invited to speak and also pitching to speak. Uh, so let's see, I guess in 2016, I pitched a talk at the International Olympic Committee's uh, Injury Prevention Conference in Monaco, and it was accepted. And doing that talk and being in Monaco and meeting all of these people from all over the world has led now to four invites to speak in places like Sri Lanka and Switzerland and Amsterdam and Vancouver, which is still to this day, a little mind boggling to me, but I'm really thankful and grateful for that. And, and that came about because of the podcast. So I had interviewed the editor of the British Journal of Sports Medicine. He introduces me to this person, this woman in Australia, her and I collaborate. We put in a pitch to Monaco and now I was able to meet all these people. And like we said earlier, create these great relationships because in any job in any career, it's all about relationships. It's all about how you treat other people and, and just putting yourself out there in a way that's going to be helpful. And I feel like I've been, I've been able to do that and been able to kind of be myself, you know, mm -hmm. even when I first met the editor. So the editor of the British Journal of Sports Medicine, his name's Karim Khan, he's a physician. And I interviewed him on my podcast. And the first time I saw him, it took me six months of Twitter stalking for him to follow me back. And then I was DMing him like once a month, do you want to come on the podcast? And, you know, being a general pain in the butt. And finally he said, yes, are you going to be in California at this big meeting? I said, yes. He said, great, we'll do it there. So then I decided to do a live podcast in front of an audience with him and another uh, researcher. And when I first met him, he was, hi, Karen. I'm like, hi. And he's like, how are you? I'm like, not well. <laughs> because my father had just been admitted to the hospital. Oh, geez. And his kidneys were failing. He needed emergency heart surgery. And so, and I said, you know, not well. And, and I told him the whole story. And I was like, you're a doctor. He'll be okay, right? He'll be fine. This is routine, right? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll probably be fine. And I was like, don't worry. I'll pull it together for the interview. And I pulled it together for the interview. And since then, he has been one of my biggest advocates. And I was in Copenhagen earlier this year, and he came and sat next to me at breakfast with a friend of mine. And I said, remember when I first met you and you asked how I was doing? And I was like, not well. I was like, I thought this man is never going to want to talk to me again. He's going to think I'm a crazy person. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, and I told him, I can't believe you spoke to me. He's like, that's why I kept speaking to you. He's like, because you were a real person. Yeah. And you were being honest. He's like, and it's not a lot of people do that. He's like, that's why I wanted to help you. Yep. Vulnerability, so, vulnerability is attractive. I mean, I guess like that's yeah. the best way to, I mean, in, in terms of, you know, being able to connect with other people, you know, don't be this thing that you think people want you to be, you know, being open and being vulnerable is, is it allows you to make those deep relationships. And number one, you'll be memorable and, uh, and then it'll open doors. I mean, it's, I love this. I love this conversation because it is a hundred percent all about relationships. Re relationships allow you to create endless opportunities. And it's like the number one focus that I put on almost anything that I do is how can I connect more people? How can I serve more people? Because mm -hmm. their connections, who knows, they could be possible opportunities, but like they just open so many doors because relationships equal opportunities, hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. And that's, I, that's great. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Yeah. Go <laughs> for it. Yeah. Just give me a quote. <laughs> yeah. I will quote you. I will quote you on that. Ah, uh, Karen. Uh, okay. So I want to wrap this up because I want to, I want to keep this consumable, but we've, we've, uh, we've talked about a lot today in terms of your journey, you know, coming from just outside of what, what, what town in uh, Pennsylvania, it's, by the way? Yes. It's old forge, Pennsylvania, the pizza capital of the world. The pizza capital of the world. Self-proclaimed, but yes. Nice. Yeah, I'm from, I'm, I'm on a border town. I was, I'm from a border town, Pennsylvania. So Elmira, New York. So I don't know if you're. Oh, okay. Like yeah. that's like up above. Is that yeah, near so, Binghamton or something? Yep. Yeah, it's like an hour West of Binghamton. Okay. So, yeah. We're close. -ish. You get it. Yeah. <laughs> Small town. 
small town America. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I just, I want to recap this because we talked about a ton of stuff. Um, so obviously you came from just outside of Scranton in Old Forge. You left on a dime to go, mm-hmm. you know, take a risk, move to the big city of New York and see what happened. And you went through a handful of, um, a handful of physical therapy jobs there, you know, jump from job to job. Ultimately, you, you just decided on a whim to go work at a gym which has created endless opportunities because you jumped yeah. in this parallel market and, uh, and expanded your horizons. And, and ever since then, you, you know, it's kind of been full circle. Like you've had that root connection from that gym, which has opened doors everywhere. Right. So then you worked at a couple of outpatient clinics, got some clients on the side that built up left, started your own, uh, your own practice own concierge practice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that started to build up, you got referrals, you learned uh, that uh, people want to help you. Like they they just, they just legitimately want to help you even, you know, they'll be your advertisers for you. Uh, Then you launched your podcast started, you know, more opportunities with that. And now you're teaching other physical therapy uh, owners or physical therapists how to start their own business. And you're speaking all over the world, you're doing amazing things and you're seizing every opportunity that comes, that comes your way. Yeah. Did I miss anything? No, no. I know. I, I spoke a couple of months ago to at a a New York city student conclave. And one thing that I said is, is to say yes to as much as you can until you have the luxury to say no. And that's what I've used for so long. And I'll say this, my guilty pleasure I watched The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And so, <laughs> Eric, I know. I love it. I love it. I love Lisa Vanderpump. I'm just putting it out there. But one of the other women, Erica Jane, she said, she was saying how her year has been such a whirlwind and that she said, yes, do you want to do this? Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. She's like, because someday, because someday is going to come, people are going to stop asking. Mm-hmm. So if you don't seize the opportunity now while people are asking and while you have the energy and the ability to do all the things that you want to do, you just, you have to do it. Yeah. I mean, there is so much truth and value with that. And sometimes it's hard to comprehend it when you're just hearing it on a podcast, right? It's like, say yes to everything. But it, like that happened to me. Like before I launched the webinar agency, I tried to launch my own course, which bombed and failed. And uh, I reached out to some of my internal networks because I legitimately ran out of money and, and an opportunity came up to host a webinar. I'm like, sure, I'll do it, whatever. And that turned out to be like the greatest yes that I ever made. And Amazing. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's fascinating. So, um, whew, that was excellent, Karen. Uh, so where can people find you? Uh, Dr. Karen, where can we, where yes. can we connect with you? And, and let's sure. drop some links. Sure. So you can find me at karenlitzy.com. The podcast, you can get it on that website as well, or it's podcast.healthywealthysmart.com. And I'm on Instagram. It's just my name, Karen Litzy, Twitter, Karen Litzy NYC. So that's usually where I'm kind of hanging out online for most of the time. Okay. So one last thing before we go, and I want to I want to give your podcast a shout out because I like the direction that you're heading. And you've probably been doing this for a while now, but you mentioned um, you're trying to go more, it sounds like you're going more consumer while still speaking to physical therapists, right? Yes. All right. What has been the most popular episode of that specific style for the consumer? Boy. Okay. So for the consumer, well, I did one on pain and the ones that I do on pain, I think can go both ways. So I was interviewing, uh, one of my mentors, his name's Dr. David Butler. He's out of, uh, Australia. And he wrote a book called Explain Pain, which is actually a very um, good for the layman, also good for the practicing clinician. And we just talked about what pain is, why people have pain, how, how pain can be misconstrued and how it can be treated. But I think that it can go both ways. I think as a clinician, you're going to glean some insights from it. And as the lay person, you're also going to get a nice intro into the neuroscience behind pain. So that was probably one of my more popular ones. I mean, I don't know how many downloads it's had at this point. I haven't checked. And last I checked, it was around like 40,000 downloads for that one episode, maybe. Nice. Um, And then another one was, I did an interview with JJ Virgin. 
So she's an author Mm -hmm. and a wellness advocate. And that was also really popular. And she talked about her best worst day, uh, which was when her son was hit by a car and what she did and how she helped him overcome that and how she helped her whole family. So that was also a really popular one. Awesome. Love it. So I'll go check out those two episodes because I was very fascinated with the angle that you, that you transition the podcast to. So yeah. I'll be sure to go check out those, those episodes. Cool. All right. So if you're listening right now, please reach out to Dr. Karen, let her know that you listen to her on experts unleashed, give her a shout out, give her some love. Karen, I've had a blast. I've had uh, an absolute, uh, a great time learning about your story and your journey. Thank you for taking time to share it with my listeners, my audience, and uh, we'll wrap that up for today. Uh, so until next time, go crush it and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to giving you the next one. Now, if you want additional trainings and content outside of the podcast, I release exclusive video trainings on my Experts Unleashed YouTube channel. And if you'd like to come hang out with thousands of other fellow experts, join our Facebook group community where we do hangouts and webinars to help support you in your journey. Finally, if you'd like my personal help to develop, launch, or scale your business, contact me directly for private consulting opportunities to see if any spots are available. And you can find all of the information above at expertsunleashed.com.